life. And so I want to pray for every person uh, it, who feels in some way that life has knocked them down. And I'll tell you, it's not just, you know, the down and out who feel knocked down. People, I've met people who've been tremendously, quote, successful from the world's perspective, and life has knocked them down. Maybe they had a, they've got all the money in the world, but then they had a health challenge, or they had, all, they had a great marriage, but then their kid was prodigal. Or maybe they had great marriage, great kids, and a child passed away. Everyone is going to get knocked down in this world. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. And uh, I was inspired. Lord, I just pray that you would anoint uh, my words, that you would anoint Tamara, that your present would be, presence would be manifested, and that many, many people would be touched by her life story today. And I ask that for the sake of the king, because that's all what else matters. It's just him. He's what yes. matters. Amen. He's what matters. Amen. So <laughs> I'll tell you how this was inspired, Tamara. I've done a few of these. Um, lifestyle freedom shows. I'm trying to be more consistent. It takes me a while to be obedient. God told me two years ago to do this. And I've thought about it and pondered it and read, does this sound like anybody else? And researched it and watched other people do it and promised myself I was going to get going. Even kind of got started. Anybody else related to this kind of got started, did it a little, then stopped. It wasn't Absolutely. really consistent. So yeah. So, but, um, I've posted a few of them here on Facebook and then also shared them out on YouTube. And a woman, very nice, sincere woman, went and said, you know, the, these shows are actually depressing me <laughs> because it seems, yeah, no, it seems like all these people just have perfect lives. And the irony was that she posted that comment under uh, Harold and Linda. And you know Harold and Linda. Yeah. You know that yeah. Harold's uh, first wife died, I mean, suddenly. Was it like a, just a couple of months from diagnosis to, to being a widow? Mm. So he went through tremendous loss. And Linda, um, and she's been public about this, so I don't feel like I'm um, violating her privacy. Um, her oldest son, our, or her son committed suicide. So people have been through something. Everyone that you meet has a story to tell and everyone tuning in today has had life knock them down and this is not a prophetic word and i don't want to speak negatively but you know we do want to give a little bit of a reality check if life hasn't knocked you down yet <laughs> or recently it probably will because we all have setbacks and disappointments and so i wanted to do this and we've been talking about this tamara sharing your story because people i'm sure look at you and they look at your facebook feed or your Instagram, and you know your husband adores you. You have one of the most beautiful marriages I've ever seen. You're a multi-million dollar business owner, had your first multi-million dollar business at the age of 20, and now you, was it like $76 million in sales or something last year, some crazy number? What was it? <laughs> it was, it was only 4.5 oh, it was million, only 4.5, okay, sorry about that. I'm not a number, okay, it was only 4.5. <laughs> million last year so people look at that and you you travel and you and i we're in punta cana and we're in costa rica and you're with your family and you're going on tour and you've got your friends and like whoa it's just all so perfect and wonderful and that's what we do we look at people's yeah, right. lives right we look at people's lives mm -hmm. from the outside and we don't really know what their story is and you and i were praying about that and talking mm -hmm. about like how do we um, I want, I want the people on my, who follow me on Facebook and of course your people too, to really know you as, as a woman of God and to go behind kind of, and that's kind of maybe the danger of social media because everybody like edits the picture now and like, I mean, mm -hmm. beyond the, this was the, this was the two minutes when everybody in our family wasn't like at each other's throats. <laughs> this, exactly. this was the, the three <laughs> minutes when, when it was fun and we didn't have the flat tire and all of that. But we just want to be real. And we also want to give them some practical tips. When, how do you get back up after even tremendous loss? And of course, right now, Tamara, we're in this season of great abundance. And people should be making the most of this. Because reality check, after seasons of abundance, what's always next? 
not seasons of abundance. Yeah, an adjustment. I call it in real estate an adjustment. adjustment. Yes, Sometimes a crash. Adjust, adjustments. Yes, could be a crash. The, the Bible says famines. That that life happens in seasons and life happens in cycles for all of us. And for you know, for some of you, it's just the cycle upwards and setback and upward and setback and upward. And other people feel like, oh, for me, it's like cycle and downward cycle. <laughs> but in any case, <laughs> life happens in cycles. And I share this. I, I think I shared this with one of my private classes that there are two times when we get in trouble. Uh, when we tell ourselves this will last forever and when we tell ourselves that it won't. <laughs> it's like when, we're, when, when things are going great, we're like, or even when they're going bad, like, oh, this is going to last forever. This is never going to change. And that's not true. And the same is true in bad times. And we deceive ourselves because life is always going in cycles. And I, I want you to share about your journey because you started out of the gate like, wow, multi-million dollar business from the age of 20. Tell us just a little bit about your background because you weren't born to big riches, right? No, not at all. Not at all. I was raised in a church, uh, sort of. Um, my dad and mom would drop me off when I was four. Uh, me and my sisters would, would go to church. So we were instilled with some good, positive uh, reinforcement there. Mm -hmm. uh, but my parents didn't really attend church. Um, so, you know, we'd go home to a different sometimes. But, you know, I never remembered going hungry. My dad worked really hard and they did the best they could. But, you know, uh, we weren't rich and it was a good middle, middle class family. So, so I had to, uh, by the age of 14, I was buying my own wallpaper and my own bedspreads and working a couple jobs in high school to try to get a, my first little 67 bug to get myself to school and, you know, that sort of thing. And he, and my parents supported me fixing the car and did what they could. But uh, yeah, so that was my upbringing. It wasn't, it wasn't a silver like, spoon you know, by any shot. And you no, weren't not having, by any shot. And your parents sensed mm -hmm. that there was something at church that, that you needed that they couldn't give you. So it, they, they maybe wanted so. to, they wanted to give, they wanted you to find answers that maybe they hadn't yet found themselves. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And so, yeah, so I was raised that way and that, and that's good. And, um, by the age of 18, I couldn't wait to leave home. So at 18 and one day I was out, <laughs> um, I, uh, a lot of people ask, well, how did you decide what you do or what, you know, how did you decide what to do? Well, I, I, this is funny because what I'm doing today isn't what I was doing then. Um, I like sewing. Isn't that ironic? And so I thought, well, if I like sewing, maybe I'll like to work with clothes. So, so I'm just going to go get a merchandising degree and get out of town, go to San Francisco. So I got a loan all by myself, a student loan and went to college, worked several jobs to put myself through and got a merchandising degree. Um, and this was, you know, long after the entrepreneurship of, of needing to make money. And I think I've told the light bulb story to you before, you know, door to door selling light bulbs because everybody needs light bulbs. You didn't so tell I, us that. Tell us about that. Okay. Well, when now? I was, <laughs> I was probably 10 at that time. <laughs> well, and I would rank leaves and all the normal stuff, but the light bulbs was the best. Was I think one. that's when the light my light bulb went on with the like, light bulbs literally with the light bulbs right. because selling them for a quarter i mean uh, buying them for a nickel and selling them for a quarter or whatever they Camera, were 40 that's years so ago you. Or... <laughs> that is so you i have to say but a little red wagon boxes of light bulbs <laughs> yeah. knock on the door who doesn't need a light bulb right yeah they have a light bulb. so that's when i that's when i got the entrepreneurial bug nice. and um you know i did pretty good in school though i partied a lot and did a did a lot of that stuff so you know it took me away from i, I you know i think i mentioned this to you yeah. um from when i first started swaying away from the church i you know when i went to well you don't be know, honest when I was about it we want to just bring it be honest okay so when i was going to church um as a young child it was uh like if somebody said heck i would like no you can't say that bad word you know i was very religious but and all in my head and, and you know, and I, and I knew I, I just wanted to be a good girl and do the right thing. And I, and, and God felt good. I mean, real to me. Um, but as I got older and school started talking about monkeys being our inheritance and I mean, who we are and where we came from and millions of years old. And, and it just wasn't congruent to what the church was teaching me. And I would ask people about it as maybe by that time I was 13 or 14 years old no one would give me a straight answer. They just like swept it under the carpet. And I'm like, you know what? My, my eyes started coming open to this church thing. Like they're lying to me. 
the school's got to be right. I mean, the school's teaching me. What is this church thing? It doesn't really make sense. So that's where I started swaying. I uh, got really into, um, actually, I'm just going to, I will be honest Do with it. you at this point. I was, I, wanna hear it. I was carrying a, I was carrying a bottle of alcohol into my classes in my purse. Um, no one would know it. Everything was good. You know how we all have that smile and we kept going and boy, I kept my GPA up. And that's all that mattered to everyone that was looking at me is my GPA was up and I got that smile and I just, just kept going. Yeah. Tamara, I'm with you. I, so, I got the highest score in the history of my school district on a cumulative history, history exam, high on cocaine. So yeah, I was the same, very I, highly functioning. I might have been high on something. <laughs> high, high on, you know, drugs and alcohol, but you can still, for a season, be very highly functioning. And I don't think Excellent. we should be naive enough to think that there's not someone who might not listen to this, who um, goes to church, even is a Christian, loves Jesus, but they've gotten sucked into pre prescription drugs or um, that nightly drink. Uh, is something that they can't now live without. And I think we need to just be honest about that because I really feel that this is for someone that you may be highly, highly functioning, but there's a substance and it, it's going to knock you. It hasn't knocked you down yet because it didn't for me. You know, I was still, you know, straight A student, still performing. But boy, that thing eventually, it deceived me. It lied to me. And that's what the devil does. It's like, you've got this. You don't have an addiction. Mm -hmm. You're okay. You're fine. Just keep going. And boy, eventually that thing knocked me down. And uh, actually that's where God found me. But thank you for sharing that. But you also, in addition to kind of numbing some of your stuff, you also uh, started looking for answers in the new age movement. Why? And I, again, yeah, I think there are people that probably... came later. Okay. Let me keep Go going. Go yeah. That came a little bit later. At this point, it was just a party. Gotcha. You know, life was We're just, just a, a party. party. And it was just a party way. and <laughs> and i just as long as i did all my duties and kept my smile on and i got in trouble every now and then but nothing major and sure. and kept going and and i got out of college and went to college and did okay but i couldn't wait to get out of college i just the corporate environment it was never for me i've always been a little bit of a rebellious one um and i partied my brains out there too and still did pretty good <laughs> somehow mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm alive <laughs> sure no, it's, it's, no uh, this is really good tamara because I, I really feel like this is for someone that it, it looks like it's okay i mean it's working you're you're holding it together but it's gonna fall. yeah it's it really gonna, felt it was yeah. okay, and it's gonna get even well it was better. all about me anyway right it was all about me and i mean i didn't i lost god and so then it just became about me it's gonna get even my better. power hang on a second and i need my, to make sure it's okay. just one person saying that they're having trouble um if you guys can hear us okay can you please hit a, bottom, a bunch of love buttons and that actually is just really helpful i know that my people are new to facebook live and i don't <laughs> do enough to encourage them to do that if you're hearing me and you're hearing tamara just fine can can you throw us some love so we know that? Because then what happens if I don't see that? And then I look down and I read the one person who is not hearing. <laughs> that kind of throws it off. So thank you guys so much. And I, I know I need to do a better job of training my peeps how this whole thing works. So show us some love. If this is ministering to you, if this seems relevant to you, if you can think of someone in your circle of influence who needs to hear what we're talking about here today, which is seven strategies to get back up when life knocks you down, then could you just do us a favor and hit that share button and send this out to your circle of influence? Because I, I know that God is here. I feel like this is a really timely message for a lot of people, a lot of people who would look at Tamara today, who would look at Tamara in the season of her life that she's talking about, and everything looks good. Everything's holding together. It's looking good. It's looking good. It's looking good. But those choices that she was making, those choices that even some of you are making right now, there comes a moment in time when God loves you so much that he lets them catch up to you. So Tamara, why don't you go mm -hmm. ahead? They are hearing us. And uh, why don't you mm -hmm. uh, pick it up and, and keep going with your story? Because you're, you're cruising along. You're starting to drink. Uh, you're walking away from God because you weren't finding the answers in the church. You know, you still kind of like, okay, so that God thing's real, but you're walking away from church and you're building this business. You've got a passion for fashion. No, kind of no business up yet. No business yet. But no you, business yet. Just you college. stole light bulb. <laughs> you sold the light bulbs. Stole. You, yeah. you stole, stole you sold the, well, I probably am projecting because do you know how I got my start in business? 
I'm sure you've heard me tell the story. I stole my brother's stuff. I stole their, stole their oh. comic books <laughs> and sold them to the neighbors. That's uh, so I was. That's right. You did tell me you that. Didn't, I'm sure you didn't steal the light bulbs. You were an honest businesswoman. So continue. So you're in school. Remember, uh, you, you couldn't say heck. So I certainly. Okay. Have no, there will be no one. stealing. No. <laughs> yes. No. no. I was a good girl. Good girl. Gonna, uh, make sure. A drinking happy. good girl. You know, and I was. I was going to say, I was raised in an alcoholic uh, environment. My Both my grandparents died of cirrhosis of the liver. Um, so for me, holding alcohol was just very easy and normal and not really looked down upon by anybody around my circle of influence. So, um, and, you know, I, I'm praising the Lord that I had really bad hangovers because I think <laughs> I can thank God thank you for, for that, that or I might have been an addict. Hangovers. I really did. I really didn't do well. Alcohol never did well for me the next day. So I'm not an addict. I don't feel like I was ever that kind of addict. I, I, I think I was just trying to numb and be cool and have fun. Sure. And, and it, it ended up always not feeling very good the, the next day. And, uh, you know, especially when I wanted to get those straight A's and, you know, do what I was doing. Okay. So fast forward, got done with college. Didn't, I was expecting and thinking I was going to go back and get my bachelor's. I got an AA. But during my college years, even with all of that, I had saved a whopping $2,000 during my college. Year. I know that's a ton of money for a college yes, kid. I know is. I have one. And that is a lot that's of money lot of to money. put in the bank yeah. 40 years ago. So um, I, I I got pulled in. And it, it's so God. It's funny how I just got pulled in to managing this. The biggest store in this large chain of men's stores called Tops and Trousers. I don't know if any of you remember back in the day. Is anybody 60 out there? That's <laughs> No. I mean, there's like hundreds of stores. So I, I, I went to work for a summer job, expected to leave. Well, the manager didn't show up one day. And then the, and that the district manager offered me the management job. Well, I know you're very good and at bossing people around, but with a straight hand. I was very like good. Straight hand. Very, Not very the, good. The, yeah, you're, <laughs> yeah, you're teaching me. You're teaching me to do it in a nicer yeah. way. <laughs> yes. Um, so the weird thing is, is I was only 21 at the time and my second year of college and finishing and going on to third. And then I got this humongous paycheck. I mean, I mean, Woo! when I say humongous, I mean, $2,500 a month. Oh, come on. <laughs> Spend that all so it was, so I started working and, you know, I just figured out again, I hate this. I hate this. I do not want to work weekends, nights. I don't care how much money I make. Uh, so I, I, um, decided to do something about that. I knew I had a merchandising degree and I thought, you know, there's people out there that need clothes, but gosh, when I was in San Francisco, there's a million stores. How can I compete with that with my $2,000? But you know what? No one's still, no one wants to clothe elderly because they're not fashionable. They just have functional clothes. So I, uh, and all this is innate. I mean, I really didn't have anybody tell me. I, so all I can do is attribute it to God hand wrote because in those days we didn't have computers sure hand wrote or messenger or anything like that 30 letters to that went to uh nursing home activity directors and i asked them if they had a need for anyone to bring them in clothes for the people that lived in nursing homes nice. uh and i said i was going to call them after i wrote the letter we could do this remotely it actually works very well right. give them a heads up this is what i'm thinking i want your feedback so i uh so i did that and uh they got back to me and lo and behold uh, they needed me. So I, uh, my uncle at the time uh, had a barber shop and he was selling his UPS style truck. You know, one of those Come ones on. where you drive like this. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So he said that I could make a payment on that truck. Okay. And then I took a little bit of money and bought some clothes and a single rack. Nice. And uh, my dad helped me build a little ramp to go into the back of that big UPS store. I could still picture sure. myself standing there. Bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. I'm going to go on my first appointment to sell clothes in a nursing home. They're like, mm. good luck with that. Right. <laughs> anyway, so I, I drove in with these clothes, wheeled my racks nice. into these people, wheelchairs and everything all around. Anyway, I sold so $500. I mean, this thing, this thing goes crazy, One hour, right? $500. Okay. Yeah, so I... One five hundred. All I want to say is when people are trying to figure out what to do, you never know. So $500, one hour, I literally went... Bam, I'm done working. Mm. If I can make $500 That's in an it. hour doing this, I'm, yeah. I gave my notice the next day and quit. And uh, that was my first million dollar business. Wow. I ended up having several trucks. My mom worked for me, my sisters, and I had five other employees. And mm -hmm. uh, really, and uh, I, was I want a good people, I want, to, I want to stop you for a minute. I want to encourage those who are watching live to engage with what Tamara is talking about.
Uh, we would yeah. love to hear uh, your reaction, your response. I mean, even just to type in, you go girl, um, that's amazing. Uh, I can relate. I really want to encourage you to engage with what we're talking about here. And also we would love your, you know, if, if it's helping you hit the love or the, the thumbs up and uh, just engage with what we're doing here and, and the discussion that we're having. We would just appreciate that so much when we go through the comments, you know, to, to see kind of what was resonating with you. And so Tamara, you've got this degree and you, you take off, you start, you, you see a need and you begin going into these retirement homes, you take the store to them and you're using your passion for fashion and your compassion for people. And this thing takes off and it becomes a million dollar business. So I just kind of want to recap for those who are just joining us. Um, you weren't raised in a Christian home per se, but your parents sensed that there were answers at the church and God was real to you, but you weren't getting answers to your questions. And so you go off into the world and you build this million dollar business and you're like 20 ish, right? And so now, so everything looks great. You're holding it all together. And now but let's get on topic that the okay. losses begin to come and they come like the book of Job rapid fire loss after loss, after loss, after loss. So Tamara, can you just kind of walk us through what that was like to be, you're on top of the world, you know, I'm in my twenties, I've got my degree, I've got my car, I've got my business, I'm a multi-million dollar business owner, I'm queen of the world here, uh, without, you know, without really a relationship with God, it's like it's working, so tell us, the blows start hitting, why don't you share that with us, because people don't know this about you, Tamara. Nope, and that's why I wanted to lead up to, I was all that, and I always say all that in a bag of chips. Yeah for those of you who talked like that. And it was all about me. And it was all about my hard work and my hand and my attitude showed it. And I was stepping on people and, and probably not talking nice. And I have a lot of regrets for the way that I acted mm -hmm. at that time, because I really just thought sure. nothing was ever going to stop me. Sure. Um, I actually uh, began thinking so much of myself that I, that I really just, I want to say reject. I actually want to say accepted all gods. Yes. I embraced all gods nice. and, and just thought that everything was oh, everything and everybody. And, um, I would, I mean, I was even doing things like palm reading. So this is when you went into the new him. age, right around this time. Yes. During that. this time, because it. it was all about me. Well, um, I, you know, it was, it seemed more tangible okay. and people were eager to open question, answer questions and Hey, people told my future. And what freaked Accurately. me out is it was true. Accurate. So I'm thinking, well, you know, these Christians certainly don't do that. And, um, you know, and then I became, because I am, discernment's my number one gifting. Yep. So I think that's where I was looking at palm reading because I actually started getting stuff myself. And so, again, I just thought it was God. I mean, I really mm -hmm. just, I didn't know that at the time, but I really mm -hmm. Thought nothing can knock me down. And, now, but, and wait, I think this is really important what you're saying, Tamara. So I don't want to, I don't want to rush by it. Because okay. what you're saying is huge. And I think a lot of people need to hit share and share this with their family and friends because this is where their family and friends might just be at. You know, you, you weren't finding real answers to the real stuff you were struggling with at church. You met nice people and you kind of mm -hmm. encountered God since it was real. But then you go to the new age and people need to understand they're tapping into something real. They get accurate, quote, prophetic words. But it's coming from, you know, an angel of light. As a, it's, it's from the dark side. But it comes disguised as help because it's accurate and it's powerful. And so you began to really tap into some of this new age stuff and even be really exercising false gifts. I meet people and, you know, they just, they have all these counterfeit spiritual gifts and they're really, really accurate and powerful and people are drawn to them. And that's how you were sucked in to it because they were answering some of your questions. Mm -hmm. They were. Can you still hear me? Perfectly. Oh, good. Whew. I had a little thing in my, a little glitch in my ear. <sighs> yes. Um, and I do think God was tugging on my heart and pulling on me this yeah. entire time because I never felt peace. I, I felt a lot of fear. I, I always felt insecure and, and the pressure to um, be all that was huge. And the more I acted like I was all that, the more I had to act sure. like, you know, it was just like this catch 22. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I, I want to add, I did get married and, and I had a son. And so all that, 
I lived in eight acres. I, I got into horses. My dream. I was living the dream. Living the dream. And, th and then I wasn't. <laughs> um, so what happened was the uh, nursing home industry changed. And I was able to, at one point, um, be able to, uh, ha the nursing homes handled the money. And so that's why I never felt bad about the money because it was coming from money that was tagged for clothing. Mm -hmm. And so all that, well, what happened was that all changed. The government basically drove you out of business, if I remember Dro correctly. Uh, pre pretty much. <laughs> they changed the rules so, and drove you out of business. With and I spent a couple of years trying to figure out another way. Mm -hmm. Ended up, ended up uh, going uh, bankrupt on that business. Um, and in the process of all that pressure and stress, uh, my hu then husband, I've been married now to my husband for uh, 20, I was Tim last, 21 years, I think. Beautiful marriage. <laughs> One of the most beautiful um, marriages I've ever seen. Madly in love with each but was, other. I have a father to my son that I am not married to anymore. Um, and there was a lot of pressure on our marriage with all this right. financial strain. He was in construction. There was a little bit of a adjustment we were talking about. Right. Uh, when you're building and you're a contractor, you start losing those jobs. So it really put effect on our marriage. So I ended up getting divorced. You said the word. Which was Look at you. You said horrible, it. It's a horrible word. Horrible, so much shame. horrible thing. So much shame. There is so much shame. Because oh. I, I still look back. Is there something oh. I should have done? Is there, yep. I, you know, it so is. So this is flow it's, it's number horrible. two, right? You, the, the government basically comes in with regulations, right. drives you out of business, drives you bankrupt, the strain, the stress drives you to divorce. So there's blow number two, but there's more blows coming. Now I'm a single mom. So now you're a single I'm, mom. Uh, I want to say I'm pretty much uh, homeless. Be, 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 I mean, I use that word loosely, but I, I moved in with my mom into their bedroom for a little while because yeah. I thought it'd be good. And in that process, when I moved in with her, uh, she was diagnosed with cancer. And how, and she goes quickly if I were, is, is no, that, it was a couple of years. It was a couple of years. No, this was, this okay. was a couple of years. Yeah. So I, 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 I stayed, I didn't stay with her for a couple of years. This was about, I should, I should back up. She was told about her cancer, okay. but we just thought all it was going to be. So by the time I moved in with her and this was around, what's that say? Probably around 2000, 1998 mm -hmm. or something like that. Anyway, um, I went and, and with my son and stayed with her while she got sick. So that's quite a, a loss. I mean, you've gone from being a multimillionaire my best friend. on eight acres and horses and all this. With a gorgeous husband gorgeous and a husband. son and a million dollar Everything business. Everything looks and... great. So now you're living with your mother. You're a single mom. With my parents. Living yeah, with, with your parents. Mother. And your mother, your mother passes away. So this is, are we on blow number three? Tell us your mother, you, you lose your mother to cancer. Mm -hmm. Lose my mother to cancer. And you were close. Um, I, and we were very close. Yeah. And, and it was really the hardest part about that, that whole thing was that I wouldn't let her go. Right. Because I was still sort of into this uh, new age stuff. Okay. I thought if she said po enough positive thoughts, and she loved Jesus by this time, I just want to say she was in the choir and very much mm -hmm. a part of her church. Praise God. And your dad works um, at the church now. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Um, but at the time, um, I wasn't okay. uh, a believer. I, I, I mean, I was obviously God was with me, but I, I mean, he just never left, but I, I really wasn't depending on him. I was really depending him. again, come on, mom, you, you must be able, you could say positive words and it'll change the energy in your body. And then, you know, if you have positive There's energy, it'll, it'll be like Pac-Man. Oh, yeah, oh, we had those. I, you know, I did it. Okay. I did all that yeah. stuff. And she did, she was such a good sport. I put little positive notes all over the house and she would let me do whatever, you know, just to help her to feel better. And, um, all the wrong, all the wrong things. But at the same time, I mean, I went along with the prayers and all that. And she had such support from the church. Oh my gosh. It was such a life. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for our church during that time for her and my dad and the rest of the family. And my aunt Sharon, um, came and stayed with her. And, um, anyway, a lot of, a lot of people came through but you that lost time, your but mother, it was probably there's that. another loss coming. Yes. I, so people, I, lost I, just, mother. I want people again, I'm going to, I'm going to recast this so that people who are just joining us know we're talking about the fact that we look at the outside of someone else's life in the current moment and everything looks great, or we look at where they are now and we don't know what they've been through and what's got them there. And I know that people look at Tamara. Tamara and I work together uh, in the Lifestyle Freedom events that we host. We've got one coming up in Costa Rica. And they say, wow, you know, she's glamorous. She's a millionaire. She's got an <laughs> adoring husband. Her daughter is the most over, you know, overachiever in the world. And everything just looks so 
perfect. And we don't know someone's story. We don't know that, that life knocks people down and life knocks all of us down. And Tamara's just sharing that life just knocked her down. I mean, blow after blow after blow. It literally is like the book of Job. And for those just joining us, she shared, um, your business went bankrupt. You, uh, your marriage ended in divorce. You lost everything, ended up single mom living back in your parents' house. Now your mother passes away. So it, there's, there's a, no, and we do want to get to the seven strategies. So, um, just share, there's one more blow. Is that right? There's one more blow coming. Well, there's probably been many throughout okay. my life since then. But Everything this, isn't just like peachy keen, sure, but, no, this but, but this is the most transitional okay. time, I think, of my life. Um, so, yeah, so um, she passed away. It was very difficult. And I got back on my feet and uh, started selling wine for a living. Um, that was uh, a... <laughs> Tamara, tell So now I'm no. single. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell us about the car. <laughs> no, no. So what happened okay. was I was actually, uh, no, I wasn't drinking it. At that okay. point, I was pretty good about that. I, I mean, I enjoy a, a glass of wine, but I mean, that wasn't it. It was, I was driving and okay. selling. And in the process of driving, I okay. was in a very serious you weren't drinking, car accident. But you were in a very serious no, car accident. Oh, okay. gosh, no. Okay. No, no, it's actually 7 a.m. in the morning, wow. and I just gotten up to go to work. No, I, I, my job was to go into really nice high-end restaurants, very mm -hmm. high-end stuff, and put them into the restaurants. Right. So that was my goal. It was for a broker. But at any rate, um, uh, the serious car accident. So I was uh, broadsided in a, in a, uh, in a, uh, like a T intersection. Okay. Yeah, and um, I, you know, I, I was, I was seriously injured, and um, ended up bedridden for several months. Um, couldn't with, with just, I mean, I tried to keep going and the headaches were horrible and, and it actually made me a little bit insane. I, I just, I was just insane. It was just hard. I was already going through all that other stuff. And then the doctors want to put me on all kinds of medications to help me with my depression because <laughs> I was in bed, but you know, it was like I had a headache <laughs> and a neck ache and I was out and it still affects me today, the, the physical side. But the mental side, hopefully, I'm a little better than. So you're but down. Yeah, that was that was the that was the this calamity. Is that this was is, it. Down, down for the count, laying in bed, and and and, and I've been pretty active, you know, most of my mm -hmm. life, um, and um, so right around that time, I met my now husband Tim. I didn't know that. Who actually um, nurtured me I didn't uh, know through that. this whole wow. process. Yes. Um, but you and, find God um, at this point, right? Yeah. So while I'm that. laying there. I, I get a little bit better and I'm, I'm it, actually something really weird happened one time I was laying in bed and I actually felt like I heard demons and, wow. and I, and, and this is when I was still into that stuff the and age. that was it. I remember I was just like the hammer was down. I was done with, wow. with that because I, because I felt like I was calling in angels and trying to call in the wrong side. Let's just put it that way. Wow. I was calling in the wrong side. Wow, I didn't know this. Um, yeah. Wow. So um, so as I'm laying there, I'm still trying to search it out and working on my health, reading books and trying to just figure out life on, on a disability <laughs> at this point. Wow. Um, there was this little church down at the corner from where I lived and, uh, I decided one day to just go check it out. Wow. Cause I really couldn't walk much farther than that. And I didn't have a car. Sure. And so I stumbled on down there and there was this most beautiful <laughs> This still makes me cry today because they were just they were just so embracing. It was just this tiny little church, and they uh, welcomed me into their Sunday school class, and they were studying Romans. Wow. So, um, and you know, can I share a couple of verses? From, yes, well, one, please, yeah. Please. So, uh, from Romans four, there's um, there was there's lots of stories in Romans that just transitioned me from uh, all this other stuff I was into to all in for Jesus. Uh, one of the steps was uh, finding this circle of of, uh, of Christians, real Christians, people that just believers that just wrapped their arms around me and was okay with my questions, okay with my doubts. And we just went through the book. They were going through the book of Romans and they walked me through it. Line by and line. I, line by line. But Romans 4, um, I love the one that says that God gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. And uh, that's uh, Romans 4, I think it's 16. So, um, and I, I felt like I was from the dead. I mean, I, I just felt like I was there. And so I was, I was just believing at that point. I was going to choose. It's a choice to believe wow. that he was going to call me from the dead. That this place that I'm in, this from all that to that, I was going to be called up and out. 
And um, another part of that in the, in the Romans four was the promise comes by faith so that by, uh, that, that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed that, uh, uh, that we're going to rise above all these things that are happening. So I just really held on to those verses. It says in those verses against all hope, Abraham and hope believed so that he could be the father of many nations. And I know I'm not Abraham. See, I lost that, that ego, <laughs> but I felt that word was for me. Um, without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. And, and I, that's and where I you just are. decided my, that's where I was, wow. and mind, body, and spirit, honestly, until, until I, I brought Jesus. So I, so wow. I asked him back into my life. Incredible. And, um, yep, it is. It was really, really quite amazing that, that it happens because, you know, there's a verse and I can't think of the verse, but I know, you know, it, or that, where it says it, that it, we're not, that things are going to come to us in this world because we're not of this right. world, but, but it's Jesus that, that makes a difference. And that's what made all the difference for me. Incredible. Um, so that's when my life started turning So the around. word of God, and I know that uh, people who know, you know, that you're really passionate about the word of God because it was the word of God. It was the book of Romans that saved your life. That's what got you. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope that if, if anyone is joining us late, that they'll go back and listen to the whole story because it really is just incredible how many blows you sustained before um, you finally came to the end of yourself and recognized that, okay, what I'm doing here isn't working and I desperately need God. And you met him through his word. And I think that that's yeah. really, really significant. It was and, just, a beautiful people. and a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people. people. So church people. Yeah. I think with that, you know, and now where you are today, I think most people know, why don't you, I mean, obviously God began moving, you got back up, you got into the church, you married, you know, you're now husband, Tim, you've been together for 22 years, you have started a new business and you've been tremendously, you know, just incredibly, incredibly successful. And, you know, God has rebuilt your life it's like job right i mean you're like a modern day female job really oh well it was a it was a tough time but you know i i talked to a lot of people and i know you do too we put on these through. events yeah. and you know everybody at the table yeah. when we uh, we've, we've had this will be our yep. sixth event right yep every single person Absolutely. at the table are is yep. bringing yep. heartache yep and we've all That's been true. through it and so i guess i, I didn't want to come on here and just talk no, about don't be too melodramatic just the heartache Jana. Don't be too melodramatic, <laughs> Donna. So we want to share. No, I want to talk about solutions. Yes, seven steps, <laughs> seven steps, seven strategies to get back up when life knocks you down. So let's let's dive into that. And you've got your steps. Why don't you tell us what the first yeah. step is? Okay, so I think that I went through the first thing was just realization that I putting my pride aside and allowing for uh, the people that needed to care for me at that time care for me because I was physically unable to and mentally <laughs> unable to care for myself. And, you know, when, when we put our pride in the way and don't, you know, we talk, we hear people committing suicide or uh, horrific things. And, and it's because they don't want to reach out. They don't want to bother people. They don't want to be a burden. They don't want to bring people down. Mm. And I think when I was able to put my pride aside and allow some people to actually help me, that was the first step. No, step one, okay. I think you said that step one was admitting, right? As always. Yeah, pretty, like, yeah, putting your pride aside, allow it. Yeah. And then Same. step yeah. two, because I'm going to share is, these um, with, 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 the, uh, with those who are yeah. joining us. I will send these out to you. Um, just post under the comments. Yes. So, you know, I, I want the list. Um, so number one, you had said was just admitting, okay, what I'm doing right now isn't working. And that's kind of it with any 12 step program too. And then number two, you said is to put your pride aside and be willing to accept help. Right. How hard is that to do? And then uh, the third, which really, you know, it'd be nice if it was the first, but unfortunately we have to put our self aside right. before we're going to be open to Jesus and so number three is I did become planted in a, in a church of people Huge. that, and, and got into the word. Did, no, I, I need to ask you, did word. you, did you go on a hunt for the perfect church? No, I stumbled you go on down to the corner. I, you, did, no. you, did you go from church God to led church? me to, <laughs> did no, you I've, go, done, I've done that, but not, not jumping around, <laughs> doesn't know, holding out for the perfect one. Not looking for the best entertainment? No, so I, you just, I just was looking for God. This is really, I, we need to talk about this for a second. Mm -hmm. Because I've had it's this, true. I've made this mistake and it's huge right now. That by the time you get the, to the perfect one, 
uh, my pastor gave this illustration. I thought it was really good. And he says, he says he really did that. So he moved from Louisiana to Florida and he wanted to plant like a palm tree because they didn't have many palm trees in Louisiana and the bayou. So he was very <laughs> excited about the palm tree. So he planted a palm tree in one corner of his property and it wasn't doing well. So he picked it up and planted it in another area of the yard. But it still wasn't doing well. So he dug it up again and he planted it in another part of the room and it still wasn't doing well. And he, he uprooted it, it finally died. And it, it died. And it, it took, it's almost like, you know, if you had just, it was adjusting, there was an adjustment period, it, it would have survived right. in any of those places. You know, which one was ideal? You know, you'd need an expert to, to ascertain that. But the truth is, anywhere in your yard in Florida, the palm tree would have lived if you mm -hmm. didn't keep digging it up. And I think, and I'll include myself and a lot of people today, um, we're looking for the perfect church. We're looking for the perfect group of people. We're looking for the perfect this, the perfect that. And the reality is you're going to be, you will be so much better off um, to just get planted wherever you can get planted. You found this tiny little church that you could hobble yourself over to. And there was no mm -hmm. lights, camera, action. There was not like, whoa, they're going to have their own TV show. It was just a simple group of sincere believers. And yet God met you there because you were willing to get planted and to get into the Bible study. And I just think that the, that step right there is so hugely important. And I think that this is for someone. And I totally get it. I, this is not judgment. I totally get it. If you're sitting in a church and like, yeah, you know, this isn't, mm, I don't like the song. I don't like the song. I've been, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> But this is for someone, there's someone out there and you're wondering, why am I not thriving? You know, why am I not further along in my faith? Why am I not stronger? And I think the answer for some of us is that we're not planted in, in the local church. We're not planted in the house of the Lord. And you did that. And that was hugely, hugely important. And I, I don't want to, I don't want to jump right by that, um, and you had talked earlier about how the book of Romans really just changed your life and being going deep into that week after week after week. Um, and you already shared that verse, but I, you, had, you had shared this with me, so I think I'm going to do it. He did not waver. It was talking about Abraham. Mm -hmm. He didn't waver to run belief regarding the promises. He was strengthened and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what was promised. And I think people really need to camp out on that. You're one of your, I know you said one of your great gifts is, is discernment, but you also have a tremendous gift of faith. How does that shape you day to day? That verse? It's I mean, this has marked your life, right? This has marked my life and not, and it's not like one verse in the entire Bible marked my life, but it was, it was the message that I got that it was, it was, like I said, I felt like it was almost a Holy Spirit's it's, it's just in me now. I don't even how to know how to be any other way. Um, and I love instilling that kind of encouragement and hope. It's kind of the basis of what hope. I love and what I do. Hope is, is that word um, that I love being able to, um, and steal upon others that might not have it, you know, uh, it wasn't, it, you know, and then I also, you know, want to give credence to the fact that, you know, having Jesus's feet inside of people made a difference. Right. I mean, if all I did was have a book sitting in That's a room really alone, good. you know, but it made a lot of difference. And, and I had my friend Glenda, you've met her. I, she allowed me because I said, you know, I don't really like to ask questions around other people because I don't want to bring them down. So this is as I got deeper into right. it and I still am feeling some doubts and I really want to move past them. She said, I get a lot of this and, uh, you know, I'm willing to sit down with you as long as it's not going to be in an argumentative fashion, right. like you're just trying to make me wrong, make it wrong. If you really, really want answers, I swear it was maybe two meetings and we sat and I had my list, right. my list, yeah. I'm going through my list of questions by the third time meeting. She goes, you have any questions? I'm like, you know, it's settled. Wow. I have it here now. It went from here to here. And I think that we all start with, that doesn't make sense. What do you mean this, you know, Adam and Eve did what? You know, none of that just sounds like a fairy tale. I mean, people get too much in their head when it makes far, in my opinion, far less sense to believe in nothing. Right. 
than to believe in what God has instilled in, inside of so many of us that we know is true and not because we're dumb. It's because we just know it's true. Mm -hmm. So I had to go through all the wisdom stuff. I had to go through all the studying of other religions and the comparing during that other time, mm -hmm. which was so great that I got time to do that because I got into all kinds of stuff that now, once it came down to Christianity, I don't said anything else. Other than believe in Jesus. So, hey, Tamara, can you just confirm um, that you're hearing me okay? I just had a call come in. Are you? Are we still broadcasting? I can hear you. Are you? Can you hear me okay? Okay, we're still broadcasting. Okay, I had someone. I meant to turn okay. off. I'm going to get better at this Facebook Live thing. I promise I'm going to get. I'm you're doing get, great. <laughs> but I, I meant. You're here. I, know, I had it on my How many list. hours sleep did you have yesterday? Two hours uh, an hour, sleep? An hour and 50 minutes. I had okay. it on my list to turn off the, the interruptions. Of, Good job, Donna. Calls, but we're here. <laughs> Um, so number four is to, to go deep and, and to study the word of God. And I know that's something that you're passionate about. And when life knocks you down, uh, there's, there's a tremendous temptation. In fact, I, I think my, I'm working on a bunch of new book projects. And I think the one that we're most excited about right now is what to do when you don't know what God is doing. I love that. I, that's what my I agent that. said. I shared with him all the different ideas that I had. He was like, oh, that's the one. And uh, I think it's kind of what we're doing he a little bit here today. What to do when you don't know what God is doing. And two of the answers are what you just shared. Number three was staying planet in the house of God. Just finding a church, just any old church, even if you're on crutches, just get where you, you can and go deep in studying the word of God. And I just want to hit one other thing, because I really want this to be relevant with where people are. And we're having a big uh, struggle with this. My, my, both of my daughters are on staff at their respective churches. And my older daughter's at a big, huge mega, mega church. My younger daughter's at a smaller, more actually kind of almost liturgical, traditional church. But the big church, it's now to the point, they've got so much technology that the pastor's now weekly begging people, like, could you actually come? Because it's so <laughs> realistic. The technology mm. is so, you feel like you're there. On, you know, especially if you've got a big screen TV in your house and you put the church service on, you feel just like you're there. And in some ways, I mean, that's great. And it started as a wonderful blessing. But now it's to the point that people are like, well, why should I get in my car? The church is coming to me and I totally feel fully present. And I feel that the presence of God, it's all right here. Why do I even need to bother? And so I just want to say if that's kind of where, and I, me too, I, me too. I'm right. Everything I'm talking about, God's talking to me about with it, like traveling. It took me, Tamara, 22 hours to make it from Philadelphia to Jacksonville. 22 hours, American Airlines. I bless That's you terrible. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> but anyway, so number four is going deep in the study of God's word and doing that. And um, Mark, I'm jumping. Hey, five do you have a verse for, for today? The you said that you had a verse for us today. Well, I want to finish the steps. Oh. Let's, can I do that? Can we get through seven? Because oh, we have seven. That and then come back. Yeah. Well, I have in my life, but if you want. Oh, Donna, 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 Donna. Can you hear me okay? I can. Are I you able to hear me too? Can you hear me? Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, because I keep seeing people say that there's something yeah, going on, but well, I can hear. Oh, well, we'll just keep going. Yeah, All you right, know, I so. want to encourage people. I want to say this again because I know that Facebook Live is new to my people. If you're hearing and everything and you're engaging, respond to what we're talking about here. You know, be sure to hit the love button, you know, just keep hitting it. I'm still hearing you. I'm still loving what you're saying. That is so, so helpful because if you don't do that, then the only comment we see is the one person whose phone is off, who says they can't hear you. Know, so please, it's just really helpful and enables us to flow more freely. You know, just engage with us. Yay. Amen. I love that. Me too. I agree. You know, share your comments, you know, just not, not just when you're having a problem, but share your comments <laughs> when you're enjoying what we're saying and when it's helping you. And again, it's new to my peeps, this whole Facebook thing. So uh, I should probably do a better job of encouraging you how this whole thing is, is supposed to work. So we're on to You're number good. five. You said that four times now, and you are awesome. Okay, you are well, here you. with a two-hour sleep yesterday and 22 hours we're at an airport. It, we're doing it, doing this phase. So number and people five. can learn it. It's not your responsibility. They You're can good still learn it. Okay, so learn number it. five. Okay. We're on number five. All right, so. Yeah, so number five is kind of, and I, and I already mentioned it, but now we're just going to make it okay, the steps. Officially. I reached, I, 
I educated myself. Okay. I said I was reading and learning how to take care of my health. I was studying the word, obviously, but also now you're asking me how I got on with my life. Back up. Now getting I've got back the word. Up. Getting back got, up. Foundation yeah. is Jesus. Yeah, we're getting the back word up. Of God. Right. But now practically, because yeah. you're bankrupt and you're a single mom. Yes. Yes. Oh, that work thing. Oh, I Whoa. wasn't, I knew, I mean, I, I, I you know, I've never, <laughs> never laid down. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a workaholic. Did you get a car? So, so. <laughs> no, so no home, no car, no marriage. I mean, you're the, you are down for the count. So how do you get back up? Word yeah. of God foundation. Uh, now okay. So, okay. So, no, no, but I do want to, okay. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to lay this low. My friends and family were there. And I couldn't have done with Glenda that meeting with me, answering questions, BFF Susie, if she's BSF. listening um, <laughs> at the time. Um, and, you know, lots of people in my life that, you know, really encouraged and, and moved me along. So, um, and then I started searching out for mentors. So I, look, I searched out for mentors yep. in, in, the, in a couple of different, I wanted a health, spiritual and business mentors. Perfect. So I started reaching out to other, and in fact, my friend Julie Cosgrove, who may or may not be listening or here, uh, and I started a women's group right about not too long after all this. And I did it because I decided to take my focus off me and start looking at others. Oh so number five, I wanted to say is just to back up is educating myself. Number six was I searched out mentors and then I started doing something with it. So six is getting a mentor, hire a coach if you need to, find people in your life that you can, why reinvent the wheel? People have done this over and over again, over thousands of years. And, and I was looking to rebuild my life. And I knew I wanted to do it different, not on my own. Remember I ran that other right. business that I went into bankruptcy? No mentors, nobody that I can really think of right now that I look to for business yep. advice. This is very good point. selfish. A really good point. Very selfish. You've got this. I don't need so, anybody. I am woman. Hear me roar. Yeah, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Very independent. I'll mm -hmm. figure it out. Um, other everyone's dumb anyway, but me. You know, I'm right. so smart. And me. <laughs> oh, and me. <laughs> oh, they me. I think I think you know oh, what it is, Tamara. It's it's a combination of our greatness and our humility together. Mm, you know, yes, it's just that. It. And that's yeah. that's it. No, now I, down, I, I truly people. am. I truly, I truly am. I truly am. Feel like it's uh, anything that comes good is Jesus in me. I mean, yeah. honestly, I, I think you ask where my faith comes from. I just know that's the facts, and um, and I and I and I'm so far from good. Well, so, Tamara, you I mean, know, and you've just shared this. You know, on a visceral level, like in your body, still today, what happens when you do this your way? What happens when you live this life on your own? And even like the most successful person that you see out there, you guys know, I was in the Grand Cayman uh, last week with an amazing group of, you know, these are multimillionaires, billionaires even. And people would look at them with the life that they live. They've got private planes. They've got multi, multi billion dollar businesses um, and think, wow, that everything is just so perfect. But apart from God, no. And every one of those people has a story. And, you know, when we met together, the very successful people, every one of them has a story of how life knocked them down. Uh, one couple I was staying with, their child had Down syndrome. And uh, I didn't know this, but very common, uh, leukemia is, is a common um, occurrence among people with Down syndrome, lost their child in his 20s of leukemia. Mm -hmm. Another person mm -hmm. just going right along, huge successful business and had, I, I think it was like a brain aneurysm. So it's like we all have blows life knocks all of us down but with, with and without god forget it but once you have god and recognize you know i need other people in my life i need spiritual mentors i need business mentors i need success in every area of my life and I no workout has, mentors yes, i have a trainer I, need, <laughs> I haven't seen mine in a month but uh, yeah i need to i need to get well I need and then to go people i just want to well, I'm not all Pollyanna either. I just want to say like, okay, so one of the other verses was that good old one that we all know, but I want to bring in another part. Yeah. Okay. So we have Romans 8, 28 for, we know that all things work for the good of those who have been uh, called according to his purpose, right? Everybody, I mean, everybody a lot coming. of people have heard that verse. 
And, uh, and they're like, well, oh, my child died. That was called the cornea or that person's sick or your accident or whatever. Um, I, I do want to add in the 827 part where he searches our hearts and knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people. And with the will of God, we know that God works for the purpose. And, you know, he doesn't say that we don't have troubles, right? We're always going to have, yeah. we're of this world. This is this world. Um, but, you know, we just, we want to work within the will of God and be blessed by that inside of our spirit. So um, I just wanted to, another part of Romans that really meant a lot to me at the time was, was that I wasn't working in the will of God when I had that million dollar business. I was in no way, shape or form working in the will of God. I was working in the will of Tamara. Yep. That's it. That's all. I was survival mode. I was just like, it's all about me right here. This is it. This is the, you know, so um, I just want to encourage that, um, you know, that, that he's there even in the midst of all the pain. And we just only need to reach out and keep our eyes on him during that time. And that's what I've learned even today. Uh, there's lots of things that have come up. My son um, ended up being diagnosed with a, he's got a disability and I'm his conservator. So, I mean, a lot of things have come up yeah. since then. Life is it wasn't hard. Like, yeah. Life so, but life I wanted to go. So it's, life is beautiful and life is hard. It's both. I, and I think in the way we do need to wrap up Tamara because we're, at, I know we're I want to do a number seven. We need to do number do seven. Number seven. And then yes, do okay. number seven. Then I want to say something and we'll wrap up. Okay. So, cause this is where a lot of people drop the ball. Oh yeah. Guess where they drop the ball. Come on. Here it is. It's really important. Ready? You number it. seven. You got, you got the Drum education, roll. got the training. Woo. You got the mentors and the okay. coach. Guess what? Guess what's you next? Wait. You got to do it. Oh, no. Wait, what? <laughs> what? what? You got to do it. You got to take the steps. You know, my first house, my very first, you know, I, I was taking the steps while I was building my dream business of I wanted to be a real estate investor. It took me one year before my first big check. One year. Most people quit. I mean, most people just yes, like, oh absolutely. yeah, they're looking for the, you know, the 24 hour, the commercials on in the middle of the night, yes. like a million and 24 hours, yes. you know, kind of thing. So, um, and I did that because of my faith, because of my sights on Jesus, because I knew that he had greater things for me and I knew, but I knew, but I knew that it was coming and I just stayed on path. So my encouragement is step number seven is to follow the steps and be diligent with them. Don't, um, I mean, if you feel that God has laid something upon your heart to do, don't always need to look. It's not happening the way I want it to right now. Just talked about this last Keep week. Keep going. On my Keep last going. Facebook Live last week, I talked about that. We get so attached to the outcome, and God's about the process. <laughs> God, God, exactly. came, God wanted to change you, you on that. the inside. And what mm -hmm. I see in you, more, Tamara, way more important, way more important. <laughs> and when you changed on the inside, God said, okay, well now you can have the stuff back, <laughs> but make can sure I, you I have a verse. Like, yes, you have a, you're the queen uh, of Bible verses. So I knew there's that you two things. Have I have a, a verse and a little, a little saying, but I'm going to say the verse is, okay. which is most important Perfect. because this is, this is another, and this is actually, so I guess Jeremiah is also important to me. Okay. Um, and everybody knows that Jer again, I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people know the four, I know I have plans for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope in a future. Well, you know, for those people who have never heard that verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, for those of you who haven't heard it, it's like, it's such a, a, an amazing verse, but here's one that I want to leave you with. Um, it's Jeremiah 24 seven, um, because I was, I wanted to circle back around to the beginning before we ended. Okay. I was raised in a church. I had Jesus in me at four years old wow. and he never left me to this whole process. I, I left love him, it. but he didn't leave me. Yep. So the verse is, That's I will nice. give them a heart to know me for I am the Lord and they will be my people and I will be their God for they will return to me nice. with their whole heart. So I just wanted to leave that verse at the end of this conversation. Mm. And I want, to, I want to encourage people who maybe they have someone in their life, maybe a child or a spouse um, who, who, who knew God at one point and was walking with him. And, and the thing that's maybe knocked you down right now is that someone that you love is walked away and gone off into the world to, to do their own thing like Tamara did. But, but God will bring them back and, and, 
And that's my story too. You know, even as a little girl, we're not going to do my testimony, but there were deposits. I talked about this last week, but there were deposits, there were deposits. I had encounters with God and I knew it was real. And even as I went off like you into the world and did all these crazy things and life knocked me down over and over and over again, um, that there was that little seeds that had been planted. And then there came for me, as with you, that moment in time, the fullness of time when God just came and, and, and took over my life. And, uh, and there was just no escaping the power of God. So, um, Tamara, do you want to, do you have the seven steps right in front of you? Can you just read them real quick? I do. People, read them real quick. People are asking for that. And then I'll close in prayer. Okay. Oh, and then you have a, um, your I do. quote. You want to read your quote. Yeah. So give us the seven yeah, steps I do. and the quote, and then I'll close in prayer. I'm going to do one more thing because oh. there's been a couple of people saying hi. So can I just say hi back? You can do whatever you want. My cousin Steve is my Aunt Sharon's son. Hey. Hi, Steve. He, um, I saw Cody, who is Susie's daughter. Susie, I mentioned earlier, that was meant so much to me through a hard time. She's on this call right now. Hi. Nice. <laughs> and Diane and several other people are nice. on the call. And I just want to thank you for your support. Nice. Uh, Susan Horak said out loud, gosh, I've known you for 30 years and didn't even know this about you. So um, thank you all for your support and for listening. Uh, okay, the steps. Uh, number one was um, admit there's a problem. And, and put your pride aside. Uh, number one is admit there's a problem. Two is put your pride aside. Number three is get planted in a local church. Number four is deep study of the word. Number five is search out others and, uh, that to, uh, and, and educate yourself. Search out other experts to educate yourself. Uh, number six is search out mentors that can help you and walk you through the process. And finally... Number seven, my favorite, just do it. Follow the steps, take the actions and be diligent about all, uh, all of it. That's you know, I, I just, I read this illustration. I'm doing the Bible in one year by uh, Nikki Gumbel, the uh, curate of, oh no, he's the, whatever the Anglican word for it is, it priest, pastor, Anglican, anyway, it's the Anglican church in London. And uh, he said that someone once gave a sermon illustration. He never forgot. They took two boots up to the front of the church and they held up the boots. And on the bottom one was labeled trust and the other was la labeled obey, trust and obey, trust and obey. Mm -hmm. He said he never forgot that illustration. Uh, trust and obey. Because you can't, you can't just go forward with trust, 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 trust. Because pretty soon, you know, it doesn't work. And mm -hmm. Donna, because you're like, trust, trust, trust. And I'm like, me, I can be obey, 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 obey. You know, it's trust and obey, trust and obey, trust and obey. You need both to have a balanced life that gets you where you want to go and where God is directing your steps. Trust and obey. Yeah. Both are important. And you want to leave us with an inspiring quote from what your guy. Yes. That's your guy. Yes, I, wish I, could, I wish I could say it like him. I mean, he says it so good. So Les Brown was somebody. No who one can do Les Brown like Les Brown. Don't <laughs> even is. try. I won't even try. <laughs> so I'm just going to read. Um, and, and if you looked at my desk, if I turned the camera around and looked at my desk, you'd see like a thousand. Oh, yeah. Well, Donna, you've been at my desk. I, I don't even like it neat. I just have <laughs> tape and papers all, uh, of inspiring words. Uh -huh. and, and this is one of them. So this is a, uh, the way that Les Brown usually ends his talks. And I'm going to do my best to say it the way I hear him. If you want to think bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it, if all that you dream and scheme is about it and life seems useless and worthless without it, if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, if you simply go after that thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope, and confidence, and stern, I love this word, pertinacity, if neither cold, poverty, famine, gout, sickness, pain, or body or brain can keep you away from the thing that you want, if dogged and grim, you beseech and beset it with the help of God, you will get it. Ooh, and, the, and, the, and the best part is we don't have to give up our peace. He, he said you might have to give up your peace. We have the Prince of Peace. <laughs> That's we true. Have the, we have the Prince of Peace. That's good. That's good. I like that. I'm going to wipe so, that one out. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. <laughs> Wonderful. Hey, guys, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to close in prayer in a minute. Tamara, thank you so much for sharing your testimony. I think it's been tremendously uh, inspiring 
for people to know that you are a woman that God pursued and just continued pursuing and pursuing and pursuing. There's a huge call on your life, uh, I believe, to equip God's people. We believe that God is raising up an army of what we call kingdom digital nomads or kingdom minded digital nomads, people who like you can have lifestyle freedom, who've created um, multiple passive streams of income that bring in money for you while you sleep, you as a business investor and online trainer. And together we do our annual lifestyle freedom event. I think you mentioned we have maybe one or two spots left for that. Uh, we're really excited that's coming up the end of July. And if you go to seven days to freedom, dot com seven days to freedom dot com i think we can still squeeze in maybe one or two more people the Today deadline is the today's the deadline day. today today wednesday today. and they by the way give us 60 it's, days it's so. may 15th i i found that out may 15th. <laughs> after after i sent the email to everybody with that but yes it is today is the deadline so if you've been kind of on the fence and you're like no, I believe God wants me to, to, to be with Donna and to be with Tamara and to get equipped to uh, be one of these people who have just total lifestyle freedom, time freedom. Um, be with Diane. She's the, uh, Diane make is a going to our the star. She's, she's a singer. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be a great group. It's make a part of something. She yes. just did Keanu Reeves. Wow. Well, I guess. And Tony Robbins events. So, yeah, I guess we're, uh, we're in the big time now. We're in the big time now. <laughs> We've got the favor of God. We call ourselves the favorites. I love that. The online, that's, say, an, that's an affirmation. You say, online, you have to have a tribe of people. So our tribe is the favorites. We walk in, in the favor of God and we follow the favor. Kingdom-driven entrepreneur. Yes. I love that. Kingdom, kingdom-driven, kingdom-minded, kingdom-focused uh, entrepreneur. And specifically, our passion is for those who want to have lifestyle freedom, to be a digital nomad, to make your living online or on passive investments so that you have the freedom to go anywhere in the world that God sent you. We're really excited about what he's doing with that. So uh, let me end a prayer. Tamara, thank you so much for joining us, for sharing your story. And I think you've given everybody some tremendous uh, strategies that they can implement in, them, in their lives, any area where they feel like life has knocked them down, those seven strategies will work, whether yeah, it's the career, uh, family, health, any area. I mean, you, of course, you had every area, <laughs> but whatever area in their life, life knocks them down to get back up. So, Lord, I thank you so much <laughs> for um, uh, being with us here today. I thank you that this word is going to go out over the Internet and then it's going to touch many hearts, many lives that many people are going to recognize that, you know, sometimes you're just one degree off. You're just missing one thing. And I really felt strongly today that the Lord was talking about getting planted in a local fellowship and not holding out for the perfect one. I really feel of all that you shared a lot that was wonderful, but I really feel like that is something that the Holy Spirit is kind of hovering over right now. Um, and get grounded, get into a local Bible study, get into a local, local church, get into a local small group, but get connected with a group of local believers that you can get eyeball to eyeball with, who will lock arms with you and walk this out. And I, you know, I make my living online, digital, I believe in the power of it, but I really think of all the things that you shared, God was, God's spirit was really, really hovering over that one. Um, and also just, you know, being in the word of God, going deep in the word of God, line by line, line by line, not just jumping around topically, but you know, do the Bible in one year. You can start today, start today, just pick it up. It's on your Bible, you version, read through the Bible in one year, start today, start today and go deep line by line by line by line and let God's spirit minister to you. Again, Donna Parto with the Lifestyle Freedom Show. You can learn more about our annual event with Tamara and I at 7daystofreedom.com. If you're like, I don't even know what you're talking about, Lifestyle Freedom. You can go to <laughs> donnaparto.com forward slash freedom, donnaparto.com forward slash freedom. And it kind of unpacks that whole concept of what, uh, of what Lifestyle Freedom is all about. Thanks so much for joining me, Tamara. Love you. And I'll see you in a couple weeks. Love you too. In Thanks Costa for letting Rica. me do this. It was wonderful. It was Woo fun. Woohoo! Join us. Yes. Join us, everybody. It's amazing. <laughs>